Hey everybody, so we are in 80 degree weather today, so it was a perfect day to work on the garden. So I'm gonna flip the camera and show you what we've been doing. If I can figure out how to flip the camera. These are our seedlings. And then today we picked up some flowers for our boxes and those pots there, I'm gonna put morning glory seeds and they've got to soak. And I also plant one pot of climbing cucumber because we have these fantastic posts that need to be washed. Um, but we're going to do that on both posts here. And then we have potatoes and seeds that we picked up. You can see the garden. We've got the rototiller ready. You can see where the soil's darker. We've been adding compost to. So we will have a nice rich soil for the year. And then of course through the summer we'll add to that by using a manure tea or composted manure. So planting will be happening probably tomorrow. We need to finalize a couple of our garden plans as far as what will go where. Tires have all been weeded and overturned and fed. So we're getting ready to go. I've got some tubers for Jerusalem artichokes we're going to be putting in and I think we're going to do those after we do a barricade in the bottom of those tires by the fence. Um, I think we're going to put those in there because we don't want them to spread. There's, there's something that become very prolific and they have a beautiful, beautiful 10 foot tall yellow flower that will fill in that fence area really nicely, but we don't want it to overpropagate and invade the garden space, and they will. Um, one tuber ten, turns into 10 very, very easily. So we've still got a little bit of weeding to do in the strawberry bed. You can see there's some beautiful little dandelions in there. We'll need to take those out. Um, also, you can see there's patches of thicker, thicker growth um, compared to the center. And what we do is we just transplant those offshoots into the other area um, to thin that area, make it more even, and we're going to put some pavers in there this year so that we have stepping stones to make it easier to harvest. So rhubarb is just about ready to harvest. You can see we've got some really nice long shoots there. Um, so that will be being done soon, and of course that bed needs to be weeded. And then we got some herbs. We have some delicious chives here check those out Felicia. I'm gonna wait for the flowers to open which will probably be but they should be open by what Sunday so when we do the harvest video that I'm gonna do Sunday I'm gonna include this because we're gonna dry flowers and all the dried flowers can be used as a garnish for salads they're beautiful as well as delicious they have a nice light onion flavor and then we still need to clean up the grapes and the raspberries and the razzleberries right between the two bigger rows of the razzleberries so those will all get done the apple trees are coming alive my husband's doing some watering and that is our truck of compost that is being offloaded and wheeled into the garden so a lot of work um, we bought what 20 packages of seeds today um, we did some that we'll store for next year. Whenever we have a good buy on them, we'd like to try to buy ahead. Um, so we bought um, some herbs. I've got some lavender plants that will go into the herb wall. Um, I've got to buy a couple bales of soil. Um, I only use the organic potting soil. Make sure if you're buying compost that you're getting stuff that is pesticide free. Um, or that it's organic. You don't want to put chemicals in your garden where your food is going to grow. So, it's not human manure. And make sure it's not human manure. Human manure is a special type of compost. It's composted people. Yes, it's composted people poop. <laughs> so, and it can contain a lot of heavy metals that your vegetables and fruits can suck up through the root system and it can actually end up in your body. So, you don't need any additional toxicity, especially in today's world. So make sure you're being very careful not to purchase anything like that. 
So, and you can see I've got a lot of herbs here. I've got 12 dill plants. We've got um, some cilantro, which to be honest with, I don't like cilantro, but I use it for my, um, for my salsa and my family loves it, so we grow it. I've got tons of parsley. We've got some elderberry trees here, little cuttings that are gonna be planted. Um, we've got some elder elderberry, if you look over there where that arbor has fallen over that my son built. Um, the winter was not kind here this year. Um, we've got some elderberries over there and um, got some other things going on. So tomorrow we'll do another video and update you on the garden. Maybe tonight we'll get on and show you our garden plan compared to last year's plan, just to give you an idea of how we rotate our crops um, and do the companion planting. Um, but you can see everything is coming up lively here. So we will chat tomorrow. So our tomatoes are all planted, each with their little tag saying what they are. And these are all cages my father-in-law milled for me. So we just have to put them together each year, which is kind of nice. And they unscrew and stack, so they make for condensed space putting them away. garden plan from last year and if you take a look this is our garden plan for this year So we're halfway there. We've got the broccoli and dill. We've got our Swiss chard and our row of peppers. Half hot and half not. Okay, so these are the various varieties of sunflower that we will be planting today in the tires by our fence. They're at the end of our garden there. And those towers, we use those to help support the stalks as they grow. My son built me those. So thank you, Nathan. Um, see, he's helpful for more than just being a film man. So these are all um, non-GMO seeds. And that's very important because we want to make sure we're doing things that are not going to harm our pollinators. Um, GMO seeds have... Uh, typically have a gene in them called Roundup Ready gene and they actually make the intestines of bees and other pollinators explode um, and it's actually one of the main contributors of colony collapse because they carry that pesticide back to the hives and infect the rest of the hive. So really really important you can check the back of your seed packet um, and they'll tell you whether it's a heritage variety like this one says heritage right on the front um, these ones on the back say GE free. Um, these will all grow at various heights. So from the base of the towers all the way up to the top of the fence, we will have flowers. Flowers. Um, these are also all the same varieties we've been growing for several years now. Uh, we use several of these as cuttings for um, floral arrangements. We actually used uh, quite a few of them in my son's centerpieces and in the bridal party bouquets. Um, there are some here that we can harvest for eating, some that the birds will really enjoy, um, but so we have a little bit of everything for everyone. So that's it for the sunflowers. But then I also wanted to show you another thing I like to do is my husband normally tills me a small patch or we have 
extra tires set up. Um, this year I don't have any extra tires because I'm doing a little bit extra of certain crops. Um, but these are all flowers that are non-GMO. So there's some echinacea here, daisies, poppy, coneflower, um, cosmo. I'm sorry, this one is not echinacea. This one is echinacea. Um, this is just a blend. But these are all bee friendly or butterfly friendly. Um, and we grow these to help attract pollinators for the garden. So it keeps everything nice and pretty around the yard and then gives us also some flowers that we can use for cutting. Okay, so here we have our cantaloupe, our watermelon, our zucchini, and then more cantaloupe and watermelon. And over there we've planted our pickling cucumbers. Hey, so today I am doing the herb wall while hubby's at work. And I figured I would just show you what we've done. So far I've weeded, um, finishing right now putting dirt, extra soil in the holes. Um, we already added some compost in them. So, um, and then I weeded around the herbs that have come back from last year. Okay, so here we have um, peppermint. You can see there's little bits coming up. Some from last year. We've got spearmint down here. Then we have some empty spots here. I'm probably gonna put celery in that. I've got catnip or catmint, dill, some more empty spots. Got some thyme, another thing of thyme. This actually had gone over and rooted here, so I basically pulled it out and replanted it here. Um, we've got oregano, which was really big and had a lot of dead wood in it, so I cut that out. We've got um, some lemon balm, tarragon, um, and over here I have a little, little lavender plant. So I've got some more lavenders, celery, parsley, cilantro, and a few other things. So I'm going to go ahead and get those planted and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so all the planting is done. We've got two nice rows. So we have, um, excuse me, the cilantro, we got some parsley up there in the holes that were empty. We've got a parsley here, some there, and then we have our celery. Um, I put in our new rosemary, some calendula, a couple of new sages, a new rosemary. So there we go. Next, I'm going to be planting these with those pretty impatience. And then the rest of the calendula, and I've got some lavender. I only was able to fit one in the wall, so those are going to go in another. Oh, my cut fell over on it. Well, there. So those are going to go into another um, pot. So, and we'll just use those. Those are going to be multi purpose because we can use them for herbs and we can also use them as decor. So there.